Dear viewers, you're getting an opportunity to watch history in the making, to watch a long-standing record, a half-century aerospace record actually be shattered by a private space plane developed by a company in New Zealand. This happened almost a year ago and yet didn't get the kind of fanfare that it really deserved. So I'm going to catch all of you up to date on the Dawn Aerospace Company, their astonishing Aurora space plane, all of their accomplishments, and what they intend to do next. The whole idea of an SSTO, Single Staged Orbit Solution, may not be as impossible as aviation experts have thought in the past. And as an extra bonus, later in the video, I'm going to bring you the entire test flight with no music, no narration, just the Aurora or a space plane in all its glory. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good morning, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about space planes, or particularly the space planes designed by Dawn Aerospace out of New Zealand, an interesting company that is looking to do what no other company has ever been able to do when it comes to space flight, making this single stage to orbit solution or SSTO practical. Many companies have tried to design effective and practical space planes, and a lot of different solutions have been proposed from dropping a rocket from, from a larger airplane and then using that space plane to ascend the rest of the way to space as Virgin Galactic does. And there have been other ideas which utilize hybrid engines, engines that start off as jet engines engines and then transition over to Hydrolox rocket engines. But none of these solutions has ever really worked. A lot of effort and a lot of money has been plugged into trying to come up with a practical way to make an SSTO design work. And those efforts, for the most part, have been faced by one disappointing failure after another. But in this case, with Dawn Aerospace, they seem to be making some real progress. Now, progress when it comes to small-scale prototypes. These are not very big planes, but at the same time, what they're able to do is absolutely mind-boggling. For example, just recently, a few months ago, this company and its Aurora space plane shattered a long-standing record, a record that had been in place for half a century set by a a modified F-15 fighter, okay, a multi-million dollar jet fighter set this record and now the Aurora space plane, a commercial space plane has shattered this record and made history for New Zealand and for Dawn Aerospace. And as promised, here's the entire flight, fastest aircraft to 20 kilometers, shattering a record set by a modified F-15.
20 kilometers, high enough to see the curvature of the Earth in 118.6 seconds. It beat the highly modified F-15 Streak Eagle by 4.2 seconds, and no faster aircraft has been introduced because most of the emphasis on combat aircraft these days is associated with stealth and not speed and rate of climb. Now, the Aurora relies on advanced propulsion, materials, and aerodynamic design to achieve this kind of performance. The aircraft uses a non-toxic propulsion system of nitrous oxide and propylene stored as liquid gases under vapor pressure. During flight, these fuels are mixed and ignited in the combustion chamber. So yeah, we're talking about rocket engines here, generating the thrust needed to propel the aircraft to supersonic speeds. The extreme forces and temperatures encountered during high-speed flight require advanced composite materials such as carbon fiber and ceramic matrix composites. These lightweight, heat-resistant materials help maintain the Aurora's structural integrity while minimizing weight, which is crucial for maximizing performance. The aerodynamic design also plays a vital role in Aurora's ability to fly at supersonic speeds. The aircraft's shape, nose cone, wings, and control surfaces must be carefully optimized to minimize drag and maintain stability. Computational fluid dynamic simulations and extensive wind tunnel testings were essential for validating these designs before the flight to ensure the aircraft could withstand the rigors of supersonic flight. The Aurora's rocket engine is key to its performance. Unlike jet engines, which rely on the surrounding air for combustion, rockets carry both fuel and oxidizer on board, meaning, of course, that it can operate above the atmosphere. It doesn't need an atmosphere to function. This allows them to operate in the thin upper atmosphere and even the vacuum of space. Rocket engines' high thrust to weight ratio and ability to function in low density air make them ideal for propelling aircraft to hypersonic speeds and suborbital altitudes. We can make educated guesses about the other tech the Aurora must use that Dawn Aerospace still needs to outline. A lot that they're not telling us, of course. For instance, it likely employs advanced thermal protection systems to manage the heat generated by air friction during supersonic flight. And these likely include ablative coatings that gradually burn away, absorbing heat and protecting the underlying structure, or active cooling systems that circulate coolant to dissipate heat. Effective thermal management is critical for preventing structural damage and maintaining the aircraft's integrity during high-speed flight. Precision guidance, navigation, and control systems make rapid and accurate adjustments to maintain stability and control. The aircraft likely incorporates advanced avionics, sensors, and actuators to enable autonomous flight and ensure precise maneuverability. Now, while the Aurora is designed for suborbital missions, the engineering principles and technologies it demonstrates have broader implications for the future of high-speed flight, providing a test case case for crewed vehicles capable of hypersonic point-to-point -point travel and routine access to space. This company, quietly at the edge of the world in New Zealand, is on the brink of revolutionizing space travel. According to Don Aerospace CEO Stefan Powell, quote, with Flight Test 57, we retired the final major technical risk in the Aurora program, vehicle dynamics through the transonic regime. We have now confirmed the Aurora as the highest climb rate vehicle ever built. This milestone sets the stage for Aurora to become the world's highest and fastest flying aircraft and paves the way for the first operational hypersonic aircraft, redefining what's possible in aviation. The company plans to use the Aurora's capabilities to offer suborbital payload services, carrying payloads up to 250 kilograms for microgravity research, atmospheric science, earth observation, and high-speed flight testing. As a matter of fact, they've already secured a number of contracts to do precisely that. 
The company is also developing an upgraded Mark III version of the Aurora, which aims to reach speeds of Mach 3.5 and soar to a height of 100 kilometers, in other words, the Kármán line or actual space. As I suggested before, Don Aerospace has snapped up some very prominent clients ever since they performed this impressive demonstration. Arizona State University is flying a modified version of their Themis visual imaging system on one of these aircraft. California Polytechnic State University will test a student-developed flight path reconstruction data acquisition system to collect GPS and air data in calibration with the Aurora plane systems. Also, John Hopkins will fly a payload interface system known as the Janus Light that measures the Aurora's payload bay environment, collecting data on the magnetic field, acceleration, pressure, and thermal conditions on the flight. In addition to that, Dawn Aerospace has made some prominent commercial partners. For example, all Nippon Airways has partnered with Dawn Aerospace to expand space plane payload services into Japan. Through this newly signed Memorandum of Understanding, ANA Trading will accelerate the introduction of Dawn Space Demonstration Service using the Aurora space plane into the Japanese market. This agreement reflects Dawn Aerospace's commitment to expanding its operations globally while deepening ties between the space industries of New Zealand and Japan. And then in Oklahoma, yes, the United States has not missed on this opportunity either. They have now partnered with Oklahoma Spaceport. It's a relatively new spaceport that's coming into existence, trying to attract more aerospace business to the Oklahoma area, and they will be flying Dawn aerospace planes from this spaceport as well. I'll provide you with a quote again from Stefan Powell, CEO of Dawn Aerospace, regarding this partnership. Quote, Our mission is to push the boundaries of aviation all the way to space, and Oklahoma is a perfect place in the United States to make that happen. By developing a rapidly reusable aircraft, we're bringing the efficiency of aviation to space flight, dramatically increasing flight frequency, cutting costs, and accelerating breakthroughs in science and space research that deliver critical insights and services for a better future. And by the way, the Aurora is capable of reuse within five hours, not five months, not five weeks, not even five days, five hours. So when it comes to reusability and single staged orbit solutions, maybe the Dawn Aerospace is on the cusp of breaking through that previously impenetrable barrier that kept aircraft out of orbit. So in the end, is this ever really going to be practical? Well, that is a matter for pretty intense debate. I have to admit, there's a lot of people who think that the SSTO concept is just a pipe dream, that multi-stage rockets are the only way to go. And as we discussed in the video, the reason for that is, is as you ascend towards space, you need to keep ditching as much mass as possible in order to escape Earth's gravity. And how can you do that with a single stage? And up to now, nobody has been able to overcome this problem. But I have to say, Dawn Aerospace seems to be making more progress than anybody else in history. And if they can keep pressing forward and at least deploy small payloads to orbit to begin with to demonstrate that this proof of concept actually works, who knows? They may make history, and if they can, if a reusable single-stage-to-orbit concept can actually be made practical, it will revolutionize everything. What Elon Musk is trying to accomplish with SpaceX and Starship will be so much easier to accomplish with a solution like this. You won't have to worry as much about explosive re-entry or the complications of trying to keep enormous amounts of thrust delivered by huge numbers of rockets 
rocket engines under control. If all of these things can be delivered in a single package and a lot of the ascent handled by safer engines, air breathing engines at least to begin with, and then switching over to a more explosive, dangerous solution later on, if this sort of thing can eventually be done, well, it'll definitely be a lot more practical and effective than Starship, and we'll be able to use this kind of solution from virtually any airfield in the world, as opposed to having to reserve hundreds of square kilometers of territory for massive rocket launches. So we'll see. I will keep all of you up to date on this. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. This is really what keeps my channel afloat is support like this. And of course, you get early access to a lot of my videos, plus some exclusive content and access to my Discord server and a lively community of really well-educated folks, for the most part, who know a lot about spaceflight and other topics. So until next time, I urge all of you to stay angry about space. <laughs>